the money flow index. So there's a lot of questions about, well, oscillators, are they effective or not? And one thing I want you to keep in mind with any indicator is that it is how you choose to perceive data on whether or not it's going to be effective. Some people prefer information being perceived in this format. Others prefer colors, different lines, dashed. So you need to find out what works best for you. But this video is going to be strictly on the money flow index, what it is, what to look for, and how it could help you with your training. Trading. <laughs> so let's first start. What is the money flow index? Well, the money flow index is an oscillator that uses price and volume for figure out, figuring out whether or not or determining whether or not something is overbought or oversold uh, depending on whatever the security may be. B. Now, the typical levels that are used, as you can see here, are the 80 and 20 by default. And the original creators decided that 10 and 90 were a better set of numbers to use. But you can see here that the 20 and the 80 tend to be the better hit areas. So whenever price gets beyond these levels, you want to watch for a reversal. We'll go more into that in a minute. First, let's get to how you would put this onto your chart. First things first, you come up here to the study setting, hit studies, and then you're going to go right here and type in money flow. And you can see right there it pops up. Now there are different types of money flow, and we'll get into those later on in other videos, but we're going to focus on the money flow index. You just click that, hit add selected, it add it right there, hit apply, and it'll bring it right there. Once you have that, you can then alter it to any setting you really desire. The outer bands being 80 and 20 and the formula is typically calculated off of a 14 period average. But if you did want to adjust that, you could do so by going right here to the gear setting and adjust, adjusting the length right here. So if you wanted to put it as a 20, a 9, so on and so forth. But I do recommend keeping it stock as most people do use it stock. So you want to be able to just identify moves faster than the other person using this. That's kind of what uh, really makes an indicator work very well is knowing what to look for in the move before the other people using the indicator. Now, if you're using a different chart setup, you can change the colors right in here. And the same thing right in here, you can change the lines to whatever color, shape, size you so desire. Uh, for instance, let's see, dash line right there for an overbought purple. Let's change that purple to red for resistance. And there you go. You can see it changes the color right there. You can change it to what you so desire. Alrighty, now let's get in how to utilize this. Well, today we had PMI numbers come out and we got a huge dump in the market. Quite a, quite a large pull in the market here. But you can see Netflix is truly diving down. We can see the oscillator went from up, 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 then the bell hit and we had a bit of a sell-off and boom. We made it to the extreme lower levels right in here. Now, a better representation as you can see right here. We got the pullback. People started to go, okay, this is oversold. We need to start looking at this as a possible dip opportunity for a push to the upside. So money started coming in and bada boom. More orders, more flow, more volume. Everything started coming in. Our index made its way up. And then as soon as we got to this upper region right in here, approximately 935, things started to slow down a bit. And you can see right in here, well, yes, we did get price up a little bit we did not get an extravagant amount of price and things did start to fade off a bit in here we did get a slight pop out of volume and then things started to trail off and we started going sideways for the day so the best way to truly utilize this is in okay i see it as this is an overbought or an oversold condition and I should look to go either go for a bullish or a bearish position based on that information. So I don't want to go short a position or go in a bearish trade if the money flow is way down here. 
as there's a higher chance of reversal than there is of it to continue to fall. Now, could it keep falling? Absolutely. Anything can happen in the market. But again, this is a profession of probabilities. So if we know it has a higher probability of reversing either from this level or this level, then I want to go with that higher probability move. Uh, other than that, that is pretty much everything to do with the money flow index. You're just looking for your macro bands, building your trade plan around that idea, and then executing that idea. Now, what would that trade plan sound like? Well, you do typically want to have more than just one indicator. But if you have just this as your indicator, you could phrase it something like, if and only if, I see price reversing and below the 80 line, I will enter a bearish trade. And then you can play that trade down through here. Once you start to see price reverse, I will exit my trade. Now you need to have a clear cut point. I'm going to play it from an 80 to a 40, so half of the index. Or I'm going to play it from 80 to 20, which is basically the full range of the index there. So you can see when we do make a full range move, you do get a bit of a drop right after that. So you need to tweak and play with it to see how it affects your style, but you need to be able to formulate a solid trade plan around using the money flow index when that is your uh, that is your chosen tool of uh, of perceiving data coming through the market. Uh